I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to this video, which is the second part of our look at Telnet configurations for Cisco routers. In the previous video, we looked at the default settings of a Cisco router, how that affected our Telnet connections, and of course it affected it because we couldn't make any Telnet connections. And we looked at how to use the privilege level 15 command and the login and password commands on VTY lines. However, as I mentioned in that video, the one flaw there, if you will, is that we've got a one-size-fits-all solution. Anyone who knows that password can log in and will be assigned privilege level 15. So maybe we want to allow different users to Telnet in, first off with different username password combinations, and secondly with different privilege levels. So we're going to configure a local database on router 2 in just a moment to allow those Telnet connections to come in and we'll take a look at what happens when you assign privilege level 15 and then perhaps no specific privilege level at all. We'll start as always by just pinging the other side of our connection and we're good to go. So right now if I try to Telnet to 172.12.13.2 Let's see what happens now. I have removed all configurations from the previous Telnet video. So when I hit enter, we get the same thing we got in the previous video, password required but none set, because by default a Cisco router is not going to allow incoming Telnet connections. So we're going to go over to router 2 now. But instead of putting the one-size-fits-all solution on the VTY lines, we're going to create a local user database. And that sounds really complex, so we're going to create a database. Well, you simply use the username password combination that you're probably familiar with, but if not, you simply username, and we'll just uh, pull one out here, and then a password, and that's it. Now, it can become a little more complex. We could add something to that line if we like, and we're going to in a moment. But right now we're just going to use this particular username password combination, Jay Briscoe in Oklahoma. And now we've got to configure the VTY lines, but we're not going to use the login command for that. Let's go down to the VTY lines. And you'll notice our first option here, local. Login local and the iOS description is local password checking. That means that it's going to look at the local database, which is what we just created, for the username and password combination. So we'll enter login local here, and that's going to be it. So I'll save my work as we go back over to R1, and now we'll use the up arrow and try that Telnet connection again. Now I'm being prompted for a username, and I wasn't prompted for a username in the first video, remember, because we set only a password on the VTY lines directly. So I will put in Jay Briscoe, and notice that the username by default does appear in clear text. But what about the password? The same default we saw in the previous video. No asterisks, no clear text characters, no nothing. Just a blank line, and the cursor is not going to move. Now notice that we were authenticated, our prompt has changed to R2, however we're in user exec mode. And we really can't go anywhere because when I type enable there, remember I said I took all the configs off, we don't have an enable password set. So this user is stuck here and there's only so much they can do. So we're going to log out of that Telnet connection and now we're going to go back over to router 2. Now we're going to leave that Jay Briscoe on there. Let's say that that's someone we just want to be able to come in and run some limited show commands. So that's a good privilege level for them to have. However, let's say that you and I as network admins, if we're connecting, say at 2 o'clock in the morning out on a tech service call, we better have a higher privilege level. We need privilege level 15, which is the highest we can set. So I'm going to type in username C. Bryant here, but notice the iOS help readout, and I know there's a lot here, but what we're interested in here is privilege. If you're setting the privilege level for a user in the local database, you need to do that between the username and the password. And it seems a little counterintuitive. Every once in a while I try to put it at the end, and it just doesn't work. So I'll just put in priv15. 
and then password. I have a lot of other options here, but the one we want is password. Specify the password for the user. And uh, we'll just put in uh, Valentine. So now I've got two users in my database. We saw what happened when Jay Briscoe went in, that that user was put in user exec mode, and that was that. Now what's going to happen, though, when we go back to router 1, which we'll do now, and try to tell net in again. Let's use our up arrow again. That's a good habit to get into and stay in. So I'll type in C Bryant this time. And again, notice the username appears in clear text and the password appears in no text. Now I logged in. I was authenticated, but notice the difference in the prompt. I am in privileged exec mode. I'm, in, I'm at privilege level 15 because I specified that for this particular user. Now I know there are plenty of routers out there that have that one password on the VTY lines that we saw in the first video. And that's, that's okay, but you and I both know as network admins, passwords get passed around when they shouldn't be. And it's much easier to keep up with your network security and to enforce levels of security for different users if you use the username password command and then log in local on your VTY lines. And in, in Cisco land, uh, whether it's in the real world, or the exam room, or a combination of the two, it's always a good idea to know more than one way to do things. So that sums it up here. That takes a, uh, finishes up our look at Telnet. Just a reminder out on my website, www.thebriandadvantage.com. I've got over 250 free Cisco certification tutorials, practice exams, and videos for you. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, there are quite a few other videos for you to watch here as well. So please enjoy those. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.